Right, let's have a go at powering one of these Cold War beasts. It's in remote control at the moment. The light says so, so it must be. It's in remote control. I'm going to take it off remote and uh, power it up manually. So let's take the uh, HT off. Let's put it to local. This one's already on. So, up we go. We've got relay supply, we've got the water coming up. It is already there, the air supply's on. Preamps got its supplies, and we're just waiting now for the filaments to light. Let's wander around the side. I'll open it up so you can see the tubes on. We need to take the power supply off, or the HV power supply. We need to open the isolator, wait for the motor to run through, and let's get some earths on. That gives me access to the key, or one of them. If we open this door here, I have a good view of the uh, valve fills. This is an old tube, an old style BY1144L, and it's got the glass body, and you can see the uh, you can see the two heat fuses on this one, and you can see the fills up now. The cathode followers again, they're an old style of cathode follower, 3Z222EW, made by STNC, replaced by the, mark, the uh, E2V ones, which are at the back there, but you can see the fills on inside the, uh, inside the old girls there. Right, we'll shut this back up again, so we can uh, continue the power up. Here we go. Earth's off. Motorised isolator shut. Power supply on. Thank you very much. Okay, off we come round the front then, see what we've got. That's a good sign. Okay, we've now got the fills on. The first AF, HT and BIAS is on. That's those TT21 tubes. They've got the supply. The AUX HT is on. And uh, we're ready. We haven't got an antenna on this one yet, so we can't progress any further until we do that. We'll go away and sort that in a moment. And then we'll have it on the air. We're now in one of the uh, RIS transmitter fire cells. Not to work on the RIS transmitter, but to actually just a quick look at the control system, because we need to put an array, an antenna, on Sender 95, so we can power it up for you. This is the manual part of the uh, screen. And as you can see, we've, sent, we've programmed, we've asked for Sender 95 to be there. It's on AUX at the moment, it hasn't got any high voltage on it. It's going to be an AM amplitude modulation at 250,000 watts, 13.700, which you've seen before on the synthesizer. The antenna we're going to use is 953, and it's on a bearing of 75 degrees, well it will be when we enter all that information. When I press the, the send command, it will then, the information will go out, the switches in the, in the antenna field will move and will select array 953, put the bearing on 75 degrees, and it'll go on to sender 95. The right hand screen will show that for you. We've got the, the 10 senders available to us at Wolferton on the right hand side. The, the numerical order is not what you'd expect, but it's the way that they actually appear out of the building and then down the antenna field. This is an absolute picture of what it's like outside. So the most northerly switch station is 80, oh, sorry, the most easterly switch station is, eight, a switch, uh, transmitter is 84, and the most westerly is 92. But this is the way it's configured. So we're going to look at 95. Here are positions where switches are available. We run down here. There's another couple of switches down the end here. Let's just uh, send this command then here, if I can find the... Uh, here he is, if I can find send. And then we'll have a look at this side as... 95 attempts to pick up an array. Thank you very much. As you see, it's now got a black line on it. It goes to array 953 switch. And we follow that up and out it goes to array 953. The green circle indicates that everything is A-OK -okay for power. So let's go outside now and put 95 on the air. Well, we, uh, we join you again now. We've now got the antenna, array 953, it's got an interlock, it's on the front there. Um, we're going to put the HT on on this transmitter, the high voltage, and progress through to um, the, the, the HT is of normal value, and there's enough grid drive to light the modulator, to let the modulator pass audio power. And we'll 
you'll be able to see that run up and then you'll see me walk towards the um, sections and do the rest of the tune up. So I put the HT on there. We've got a green. And if we just look at the top there, we've got the main HT at about 10.5 kV. Right, if I just progress now to the drive stage past the RF. This is ready to go on 13700. Press the HT. There we are, we've got about uh, 3 kilowatts. 3 kilowatts on this frequency. Cathode current, just under an amp. And as I say, the power is coming over the coax then into the RF section. Meters are fairly well balanced, you can see there. Uh, you've got meter readings here of balanced power. Final anode current, about 22 amps on this service. SWR, 1.05 to 1, which is a pretty good figure to have. And the penultimate anode current, just over about 4.5 amps. 4.5 amps, 11 kb, about 44 kilowatts in, so 30 kilowatts or so leaving this stage into there. Right, here we are then on the final stage. We're going to go for a manual tune-up now. So you're able to see the meters move and see what we have to do to uh, tune the transmitter. It's actually tuned, but we'll give you a quick demo of how it works. So the pen stage first. Like most amps, uh, min on the uh, plate feeds, min on the anode feeds, max on the grids. Let's have a look. So pen stage, we're looking at this as the combined metering. I'm going to turn the controls now. Oh dear, didn't like that. As you were, keep it running. So that's the pen stage tune, just over four amps. We're looking at the grid here now, just over two. And we also look at the pen to see that they're balanced. If I just alter them slightly, just get them about the same. There we are, nicely balanced. Grid's balanced, good. Look at the finals. Hands move down. I moves to this meter combined. Now there we are. Just dip at 22 amps. Look at the final stage here. And set them both for the same value, just over about there. Want to, that's, uh, that's 22 amps, it's about 220 kilowatts. Want to run a bit more power, 250. Just couple up to 26 amps. 26 amps, 250 kilowatts, 15 amps, 150 kilowatts, easy. How much power would you like for about 22 amps, 220 kilowatts? Is that done? Okay, well the cameraman zoomed inside now. We've put modulation on the sender, so you can see the cathode current now peaking, 5 to 10 amps or so just on the meter above it is the grid current just nibbles a little few milliamps there as it um, as the final stage runs into grid current just look now at the ore band you'll be able to see the uh, modulation on the front of the ore band optimod unit there we are here's the uh, here's the mod on the ore band and you can see the gain reduction taking place on the various frequency bands the bands are 160 hertz 420, 700, 1.8 kilohertz, and 3.7 kilohertz. You can see the content of the uh, of the program material. So that's the all band working, and the transmitter working at 220 kilowatts on 13.7 megahertz. Not bad for 49 years old. Since this was installed in 1963. Just look above here, we can see the number of hours that the machine has run. There's a meter at the top, it says 218970. That's 218,970 hours of programme material. Quite amazing really, in 49 years.